Parent Entrepreneur Power, conversation number 239. Parent Entrepreneur Power. Um, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a <mama> power. <laughs> this is the podcast for parents juggling the tough choices required for success in business while putting family first. Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Johnson, and I share the ups and downs and dirty truths of profits and potty training while chatting with successful parent entrepreneurs from all walks of life. Are you powered up? Hey there, Power Parents. Guess who? Mary Catherine Johnson here. Welcome to Parent Entrepreneur Power. You know where you are. You know where I am. You know who I am. But I get to introduce you to some incredible people that I've recently met that uh, I think are going to floor you a bit. So hang on to your hats if you're wearing them and your seats if you're sitting on them. I get to introduce you to Austin Blood, an author and speaker. He helps women have better relationships. I think you're going to want that. And Danielle Hill, who happens to be his secret weapon. <laughs> I know what that means, but I get to share it with you here in a second, uh, too. So, hey there, Austin, Danielle, how you doing? Hi. Hey, what's happening? How oh are you? Gosh, I am fantastic, and a lot is happening. The sun is out, and it's getting cooler, and we're no longer into the heat of summer. So I am a very happy woman, let me tell you. We're in Southern California and it's wonderful weather. It doesn't matter, right? It's always right. pretty much wonderful. Yeah. So, hey, welcome to the conversation. I, I really can't wait to share all of your uh, insights and your business and parenting and your original story, because I think your story is a bit original. So uh, let's start with that. What? Give me your once upon a time story. How did you get into this whole parenting and entrepreneur gig? Which came first, the kids or the business? Uh well, the, kid, the kids came first, uh, her kids came first, and then my kids, we were married, and then each of us got divorced right around the same time, met each other, started dating. And then at the time, I was working um, for corporate America, so I always like to say I was working for the man. And um, through a strange um, series of events, I wound up uh, getting, well, should we, I'll just call it what it is, I wound up getting fired from my job which in retro, you know, is panic central as it happens when you're, you know, you're supporting a family and, and you get canned. But um, in retrospect, it wound up being the best thing that ever happened to me. So to make a long story short, uh, I'm sitting there cooling my heels. I got no job. I have a severance package. I'm kind of looking around going, hey, this is kind of cool. <laughs> well, Maybe take a step back. First of all, I have three children. When I met him, we've been together for roughly six years. So I have three children, including a special needs son who has, you know, that has a high functioning autism. And he had just a baby girl. She was only about two and then an older daughter. So we had five kids between us and we started dating and he lost his job. And that kind of opened up opportunities for us to do something together. Right. Take it from so there. And, that, and that's pretty much where I was going with that. So, so I'm cooling my heels, figuring where do I go? And so, so just to condense everything, um, Daniel and I, Daniel said, you know, you've always liked to write, so you should, you should really write. So where the heck am I going to write about? She said, well, just write about anything. So we started a blog, and um, to make a long story short, some of the things I wrote uh, wound up going viral. Uh, before we knew what was happening, uh, you know, we were getting media offers from the Huffington Post and Dr. Drew and Steve Harvey. And uh, there was a point, uh, Daniel and I were saying, wow, you know, some of the stuff that we've written, it seems to resonate women with women, seems to help them with their lives, their relationships. Um, maybe we could actually make a business out of this. Right. So it originally actually started as a hobby, really as a blog. This was never by any intent set out um, and created by design. Um, and so it has been a classic example of just kind of make it up as you go. But uh, <laughs> she has a she has a, an amazing vision uh, for ways to take what I would guess I would be I guess I would say my common everyday experience and make it relatable for women so that they can understand it. And I think one thing I want to make clear is I'm, and I say this on the front page of my website, um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. Um, so if somebody needs a bunch of letters after their name in order to feel that they need that type of counsel, then I'm probably not the guy. But a lot of people um, I found like the straight talk. They right. like they like they like just a real guy who's who knows what it's like to live and walk in their shoes, and doesn't you know preach uh, 
text, what I call textbook theory from his pulpit on high. So that's kind of essentially what we do. I mean, our, our mission statement is enriching women's lives by showing them their extraordinary worth. So a lot of what we do, whether it's our podcasts, our online programs, uh, the books that we've written, it essentially uh, centers around helping women have healthy relationships, but not by understanding men nearly as much as it is just helping them to value who they are more. And then when they do that, they make better decisions and ultimately have better relationships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I have to say the whole reason this business took off as quickly as it did is because about five years ago, Facebook had, you know, these fan pages that they were pretty new. And so I reached out to the mommy fan pages and the divorced women's fan pages and said, hey, check out this guy. And so just sharing those ladies sharing his articles and his posts and and we just grew like crazy, yeah, it was for, crazy. The, for about two years. We're at about 160,000 fans and it's all organic. Yeah, it was all organic. It was, a, it was amazing. Just the sheer power of word of mouth when you're not locked down. I mean, it's, it's obviously a different yeah. world today. Oh, right? yeah, definitely. Back then, I mean, we I mean, I could post a really simple quote and, and I mean, it would be not uncommon for me to come back and find 500 or 1000 shares. And then our page likes had gone up by, you know, 500 or 1000 that day. People, right. yeah. But see, what I love about what you guys are talking about is that this grew from, um, even though you're not a woman, right, Austin, but you were talking about the same concepts of what you were feeling at that time. And right. you were just you were just relating them, and uh, Danielle was picking up on them and sharing them, and women related more right. to it. You were talking about emotions and feelings and and the things that you were experiencing, and it it basically so many of us become accidental entrepreneurs in that respect. You Absolutely. look at something and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. People are loving what I'm doing. Let's give them more. And the only right. way you can give them more is to sometimes charge something for it because it is a lot of your time. So. Wow, that is incredible. And so that was two years ago, you said? That was five years ago. Oh, yeah. wow. It's a definite need for a male's perspective regarding women's issues. Do you know it's, what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. And it doesn't hurt that he's, uh, he's good to look at. And it also doesn't hurt that his voice is incredible. Right. <laughs> so really, honestly, that feels comfortable. Um, yes. you know, it really feels comfortable and, um, warm and all those things it feel, but not threatening, you right. know, I'm not thinking that, oh, I'm going to hook up with this guy or right. he's, he's got an ulterior motive, right? None of those feelings right. are coming into play. It really is, um, actually what you're saying comes across right. as warm and caring because you are so, Wow. All right. So you've been doing this for five years and obviously together is a, is a completely different dynamic. I have another podcast I need to introduce you guys to because it's a, it's, it has a, a, a bent of uh, family, but it's specifically for couples and how we work together. So yeah, I'm going to hook you up with, uh, with Tom and Ariana. That'll be an interesting conversation. That'll be interesting. Let me tell you, they've interested. A therapy session yeah. for us. <laughs> <laughs> so take me the next step now. So um, thinking about what you've uh, been doing and especially going from blogging and Facebook um, shares and Facebook um, posts to mm -hmm. business. Yes. How, how did you, what did you need to know? And, and I'm assuming Danielle might've done this and I don't know if you did this too, Austin, but what, what did you need to know to go from, let's just start a blog and start writing. And you said author. So I'm assuming you have a book as well. So yep. from author to business owner I mean, what did you have to know it's it's a really interesting <clears throat> question because like i said we never set out to do but this by design and originally that the whole intention was just a hobby hey let's just share some things just from the heart uh and there was no uh, i guess i would say master plan um but then you know when we had this uh, in terms of the audience size that we really saw this starting to grow we said to each other well maybe if we monetize if we, if we can actually make money doing this, we could really do this the right way. Because right now we're in a shoestring budget, right? right. I, I'm living off my severance package. I'm basically you know, writing on a, a borrowed computer on a free WordPress site. And, you know, this is, you're not optimized here to really spread your message the right way. So, and I, and I give Danielle, and again, when I call her the secret weapon, if I, if I look at our history and, and the major shifts that have been moved forward by this business, a lot of that comes directly from her. And she she essentially, we were kind of at our wits end monetarily. Um, and she said, you know what? We really need to find somebody who understands marketing, 
who just can take you, can look at you and say, what you're doing is cool, but here's how you can, um, I hate to use the word, but I'm gonna use it anyway, capitalize on it with integrity, right? right? Rocket fuel, I'm saying give it rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, we wound up hiring a a gentleman by the name of Russ Ruffino, who is essentially a webinar master. Mm Russ is very good at taking your your core value offering and and helping you construct a really value oriented webinar around right. it. So to make a long story short, uh, Russ came in, he taught us a bunch of things, and he said, the, and this is a very valuable lesson for me, and I, I hadn't really ever thought of our business in this way before. He said, the first thing you really need to think about as an entrepreneur is is what problem are you solving. Right. It's kind of this is the, the classic secret. What's your secret sauce? You know, there are any number of terms for it. what problem are you solving? And so Danielle and I sat down. And we we'll said, what, what can what problem can we solve that these ladies know that they have? Right? Well, a lot of women really struggle in their relationships, whether it's with their husbands, whether it's you know single women who can't find a healthy relationship. So we kind of started there. And then as we grew from there, we, we started to just refine our messaging a little bit in terms of the value that, that we brought to these women. Because you got to, you got them, you know, there's that classic point A to point B move, right? Today, they're point A, they want to be a point B, you they have to be convinced that you can take them along that. And so that's really kind of been our journey. But anyway, in terms to answer your question, how did we make that shift? Uh, Danielle basically said to me, and she said, you know, it came to me one day and said, if we're going to keep doing this, we need to find somebody who can help us do this the right way. And, and Russ was really the first guy. And since then, we've been really fortunate to have just uh, a number of mentors that, that have kind of moved us further and further along. And uh, here we are. Yeah, wow. that's a cliff, that's so a cliff notes version. So essentially, so. he does Facebook lives and, and webinars, and we get women into our online uh, programs. Right. right. And you basically take them from point A to point B and Correct. they have something specific that you can speak to, that you can solve. And uh, it seems that from blogging, you went straight into webinars as your quote product or excuse right. me, your sales funnel, so to speak, or right. your cycle or how to how to get people to know, like and trust what you have. And then right. you had to build a course in the background right. um, after that. Now, did you build the course ahead of time or did you sell it first and then see who wanted it and then uh yeah (laughs) we kind of sold it first and then built it on the back end and the women that we had in the program we'd reach out and say what what do you want what do you need what do you what would you like from this program so i'm building all the modules while he's you know he's he invested a lot of time in the ladies up front because when we got them into the first program which was a a, like a two thousand dollar high ticket item it also had one-on-one time with austin so he would spend time on the phone with these ladies and it was market research right to to talk to all these wonderful ladies and, and they would tell him his you know their struggles and in the back end i'm building the modules and trying to meet their needs right so that's how the program came about. I mean, we use these ladies as our market research. Yeah, and, and that's still to our day in, in large part is our creative process, um, meaning that Danielle will come up with a core idea, whether it is um, something as simple as we need to help them navigate the online dating space better, or whether um, we need to help them give them some made tools that they can use to create big mind shift shifts. What, what She'll come up with a basic idea um, like, and then, like blending families, like blending families is an issue, right? Or, um, you know, there's so many issues. It doesn't have to be just single women. It could be married women who just have lost themselves, you know, and they've got, they've thrown their life into their children and now their children are all gone and they don't know who they are. Right. 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 So and so, and I don't so, know anything about that. Yeah. I I'm like, have no clue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Too. well, that, yeah. well, that's, that, well, that's the drum that we, and you know, that's the drum that we bang. I mean, believe me, I love getting on the phone and say, listen, girl, one of the most important lessons that you can ever learn is how to be selfish in the right kind of way. So let's figure out how to be selfish. <laughs> yeah. First off, that word selfish is a bit yikes. But then at the same time, it's like, yeah, give well, it to me. I, you betcha. That's why, I, that's why I gave that caveat in the right kind of way. In the right way. way. That's right. So, and then, so I guess I got to ask you something. So two questions. I'm going to bring the kids in here, here in a minute. But the first one is, how the heck does this man, can this man talk to women in a way that helps them uncover parts of themselves that they didn't even know they had or hadn't tapped into for a long time? Why do you think you uh, are so good at that and that people respond to you so well? You know what, I have to be honest, 
it's a gift for him. I, it truly is an innate gift that he has. And that's why when we first started dating, I remember sitting at the table on our very first date, looking across the table and he was telling me about his corporate job at McKesson and blah, blah, blah. And I just remember thinking, oh, that voice and, and that look, you could, I, I remember thinking, you should be doing something entirely different than sales because you've got this whole package going on. And the more I got to know him, I just realized he has this special, unique gift to, that resonates with women. I and, agree. I agree. Anyone who listens to his, his podcast or his programs will say they feel like he is reaching out through the microphone and grabbing them and speaking just to them. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy, but that is his gift. And I firmly believe that is what he was supposed to do. And I was brought to him to kind of get this thing launched. So that's, how we work, right? Don't you think? Yeah, I couldn't really answer that question because I don't, I don't, and I'm not saying this to be deliberately humble. I, I just don't really see myself that way. You know, I just, and, and again, all of us, we all know our own insecurities, right? We all know the things that we wish were different. And I, and I just kind of, I don't see that what I do is anything special. I mean, obviously it is in the sense, but I, when I get on the phone or when I sit down to write something, I just kind of, you write it from the it heart. It just comes, whatever comes. I don't, I don't, purposely contrive any of it. And I just put it together, hopefully in a way that resonates and it sounds like it does. So, yeah. And I, I'm just going to put out here right now and, and I'm going to make sure I date stamp this, that, um, at the point when you actually embrace your genius, sir, uh, is the, the point that, uh, you're just, you're going to be absolutely unstoppable. And I say that from a mm -hmm. place of it, you and not being humble, not being like you have to contrive, but when you embrace this power and this ability and this gift that you have, um, the, it will be known beyond the way it is already known now. Because I see it so clearly. And I just recently saw your webinar. We're not talking months and years ago. We're just talking recently. And that's, I, Danielle, I had the exact same impression. When Thanks. I sat back and it's like, whoa, I just feel so comfortable. Right. Thank you. Um, that and that's it. That's when you know you have something. And to, to take that, I'm, I'm just going to say right now, power parents, you heard me say it first. <laughs> awesome. But no, I, and, and I, just to let you know, and I know you guys know in the audience, you know why we call ourselves power parents, right? Because we have the power already. We already know how to do this stuff because we've, we've changed diapers. We've helped kids go through potty training. We've helped them said goodbye to him at, at kindergarten and didn't just fall into a piece of nothing on the floor. Um, we cried when we got home, but not in front of the kid, right? Hopefully. Um, so we have that power already, right? You guys. So let me ask you about your kids. How, so that was five years ago. How old are they now? Okay. Uh, you start at the top, the five of them. Yeah. <laughs> I have a 19 year old who just started college and he's my, he's my high functioning, super smart science brainiac child um and then i have a senior in high school he's 17. i have a daughter who just turned 14. she's my little mini me my my wonderful better half next next austin he has a daughter who is 15. Mm -hmm. she and my daughter are both best friends they've been best friends since the day they met they're they uh they're inseparable which makes life a lot easier for us <laughs> and then he's got his little his little monkey who is, she just turned nine, nine, just a couple weeks ago. So we have nine to 19 and wow, they wow. are all, they all live 50% with us and 50% with the other parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a full house sometimes. Wow. And coordinating all of that, right? It's, yes, well, and well. The, the, the driving to all the different schools <laughs> is that alone. Only one of them drives. So it's, it's been, it's crazy. Well, this, you know, in, in the interest of full disclosure, and this is one of, this is a recurring theme in a lot of the work that we do. Um, Danielle, and indeed women are in particular are the glue that, that holds this family machine together. I mean, we men, most of us, and I can, by the way, I include myself in that, are not all that great at this kid parenting family thing, nearly to the degree that, that she is. Uh, and the, the testament to her is that all her, her kids want to be here all the time. 
And so that means that she fosters an environment where everybody thrives. Whereas, um, you know, if, if the place is a mess and everybody's happy, um, she'll say, look at this wonderful, look at how happy everybody is. And I'll look around the house and I'll go, this place is a wreck. I got to get out of here and go do some work. Right. I mean, that's the difference in our mentalities, which I think is very common between the masculine, right, and the, and the feminine perspectives. But anyway, I give her... I give her a lot of that credit for fostering the, the the environment where everybody is happy. Because as I always like to say, if we were all a bunch of uh, you know grumpy guys all the time, it wouldn't be the best place to live. <laughs> right. No, right. it's definitely a balancing game, and it's like he said: if the house is a mess, Mama's working. If, right. You know, and if the house is nice and clean, then then work. You know, I'm taking some time off work and, and taking care of the home. But but it's very hard to have a nice clean home and me being able to work all the time. Well, what's funny is the thing that really put us on the map initially, at least in terms of greater media exposure, was I wrote an article about my shortcomings as a father in, in this exact regard, and I said, look, we can't do this. Here's why we suck. Here's why you ladies are, are better at it. And I have no ad idea admitting it. And the Huffington Post published it on their front page. And so that was like the bam, like the first big thing that, yeah, that, that, you know, was, that when we put that out there, it was just insane that, was a good question. Um, that we didn't even expect. Uh, but it, it was funny that we're talking about this exact thing because it's really my, I guess I would say, now this, I'm not speaking for all men, but by and large, I'm generalizing a bit here, but by and large, we men can't do this nurturing, caretaking, no. multitasking thing like women can't. We can't, and there are biological reasons for that too. Our brain's not made to do it as no. well. So anyway, hats off to you ladies is all I gotta say. <laughs> it's the short, it's the short. The short version of it, yeah. No, I, I agree 100%. And it's it really does, uh, it, it is a testament to the fact that you guys have worked that out and figured that out and um, maximized strengths and minimized weaknesses and allowed everyone to be who they are uh, instead of trying to change. And unfortunately, too many of us try and change the other one. And I've been married 35 years, been there, done that, doesn't work. <laughs> so well, if you want to be happy, don't try and change them. You either accept them or you get out. Here's your two choices. Right. Well, there's, um, there, there's that old quote. That's, what, what does it say? It says, um, Men marry women hoping that they won't change, and women marry men hoping that they will change. Both are invariably disappointed. That's right. right? And that's, that's pretty, that's, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've changed quite oh, yeah. a bit over the last 35 years. Yeah. Um, yes. Just the fact that I was only 19. That's why Daniel's my permanent fiance. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're not changing. There you go. Yeah. So, and then how did, so that's great. You brought up another point though, Austin, too, when you said that, okay, the house is a mess. Dad's getting out of here. I got to get some work done because your brain needs that structure. It sounds like, and it needs that um, form to be in a place where you can focus on what you need to focus on. So how do you bring the, the business into this whole family mix? And, you know, it sounds like you guys actually maybe work from home to a certain extent or don't work from home. You have an office. What tell me, bring, me into that mix well i generally work from home i i love I the fact the yeah i love the fact that i could wake up in pjs you know make myself some coffee lay in bed watch the morning news and answer emails i love it i love it whereas he feels like he needs to be out of the house to be creative and to get things done. Um, so we're completely polar opposites. Yeah, he has to drag me out of the house. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not very productive at home. When, when I stay home and try to get stuff done, my productivity is a fraction that if I head out. Now I'm really fortunate, because we live in Southern California, which means even in the middle of January, I can drive to the coast, which is you know, seven miles as the crow flies. And then we've got all these hotels and resorts and I can find a little nook in a corner, I can disappear with my MacBook and I can write and just be happy as a clam. So it's not like I have to have an office, um, which is wonderful. So I can actually go be productive. But if I try to stay here and do it, it's like, oh, there's the bed. Oh my gosh, that looks really, I totally need a nap. Well, you, you're, 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 you're just, but, you, but psychologists, you, get dis, you get distracted easy. Yeah, but psychologists yeah. have also said that you shouldn't work in your bedroom. Yeah. There's, there's, right? A lot of people need that clear delineation. And and again, this is a personal preference, right. but I, I am one of those people. I just, I just can't do it here. No, I can work anywhere. I could, yeah. I could do it. I could work on the couch. I could work in the car. I could work anywhere. Kids running around. I can tune them out. Um, I can just do that. Whereas Austin, if, if he hears the crows outside, he's, you know, I can't focus, you know, I need to get out of here. Where that's the, just to be, just to be clear. That's only when the mic is running and I'm trying to record and I'm like halfway through a great on. thing. 
the, <laughs> there's a damn crow again. I know, I know. And Can't I, put a gold gate on it. I right. know. And, I, and I'm telling you, it's the exact same thing with us. My husband has his own office he goes to. He's a tax accountant, so he, has, he sees clients there, and it's more traditional type of situation. And yeah. I've tried to get him, because off-season, off-tax season, he can pretty much doesn't matter, right? He doesn't have to see clients all the time. He still does work, but he doesn't have to see clients. He could easily work from home, and it just is not possible it's just not part of his i mean he might he has i finally got him to hook up so that he can check his email from home if he has to but he never does it unless right. it's like he's we're on vacation for the week and he's gonna come home and he's like you know let me check and see what i'm gonna face tomorrow when i go back to the office that's the only time otherwise he doesn't even do that so right. you know unless i think it's all part of his for him it's it's part of that routine you get up you shower, you put on your uniform for work, and that kind of shifts your mind and says, I'm ready for work. And many people do that when they work from home too. I'm not one of them. I can work in my pajamas. I can take a shower, not take a shower. The only right. reason I put makeup on is if I'm going to see people. So yeah. that's it. No, I, that's what I love about it. Yeah, but I understand yeah. what you talked about, the mentality, because a lot of men do this. I mean, I used to work with a guy, and, and, and I was always home office, even when I was in corporate America, but he used to get up every day, and he used to put on his, his nice shirt, his pants, and his shoes, because mentally – that got him in the zone for where he needed to be. Whereas my boss would sit over there and his, you know, do conference calls in his underwear. So right. um, it's just a personal thing. But for me, I'm more along the lines. I got I, I need that structure. Yeah, and for me, all I got to do is stand in front of my computer and I'm working. Yeah, yeah but I, it's good because it gets him like out that. of the house and it yeah. separates us, and we yeah. need that time apart to do our own thing. Oh, yeah, and then we'll come together and. and be a family. Yeah. Same here. It's wonderful. He goes to the office. It's fantastic. He comes home. That's kind of almost my cue that things right. are changing. Cause if I didn't like last night, I don't think he got home till like seven 30 at night. And all of a sudden I look up, I'm like, Oh, it's seven 30. My son's probably kind of hungry. Yeah. I probably should have started dinner. Right. <laughs> and I just, I'm not even in, I'm in the zone. I'm working, I'm doing what I need to do. And him coming home is kind of my cue that, okay, right. it's time to start thinking things are shifting. Uh, right. and it, you know, that's whatever you, whatever you do that works. And, and then how do the kids fit into that? So they don't, they don't say that dad is gone to work necessarily, or do they, do they look at that as dad's gone to work when you leave? <laughs> they know when dad's in work mode Yeah. because, because if they try to interrupt me when I'm in work mode, they get barked at Yeah. <laughs> nicely, but it's like, Hey, can't you see I'm trying to work here, kid? No, no. So, <laughs> yeah. What is that yeah. Well, if you're, t you're, if you're on calls with clients and you're, oh, yeah. Upstairs, the kids are allowed. They're downstairs, and the volume's low, and and they get it. Um, it took a while for them to finally get it because they were younger a few years ago, and yeah. they're just loud kids. Yeah. But um, now they understand, and all the kids are gone to school till you know three thirty ish. So we generally try and do everything during the day. But but with this business, one of us seems to always be on. One of us is always in a group. One of us is always you know, doing something, even on weekends, one of us is, you know, hanging with their kids and the other one's upstairs working or, you know, yeah. figuring something out. You know, it's, it's not like a regular nine to five job where you turn it off and you go home and, you know, we're always working. There's always an issue. Right. There's always something. Yep. Someone needs something. So yeah, exactly. I, that's exactly what I feel. And, and that's where my husband is able to turn things off where I'm not because mm. I, it's here. And so it's easy for me to go, oh, that's right. And they'll go to my computer when something all of a sudden hits and I remember something. I don't care if it's, I'm climbing into bed and I'm getting, and, and all, and then my brain's starting to shut down and that thing just all of a sudden comes to the top going, oh, wait a minute, what about this? And I go do it or go at least write it down, you know? We're so connected now. And, and obviously these devices that we all have now welded to our hips are, are a big part of that. And there's, as a matter of fact, there's been a lot of recent studies that essentially have a you know, validated the addiction factor oh, yeah. that, you know, dopamine rush every time you get a text. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a serious problem. Yeah. And yeah. I, I know for me, I didn't, I didn't think I don't, I didn't think that I worked all the time, but when I actually go somewhere and actually unplug for even a few hours, it feels weird. And I'm like, Oh, this is kind of nice. This is what it was like before, uh, you know, Steve Jobs stepped on stage in 2000, you know, seven with the iPhone. Can't we, can't we go back to those days? Yeah. Right. Okay. I know. Luckily I, I trained my boys well because they were in before the whole, uh, phones for every kid at the age of four, right? Um, right? They didn't have a phone until they started high school. Um, and I also trained them that it gets turned off at night 
and Good. out of your room. <laughs> so uh, my older son, even though he doesn't live at home anymore, it still has that process. Okay, when he goes to bed, he turns off his phone, he puts it out into the kitchen to charge or do whatever. Um, and then he doesn't he's not reachable, right until the until the morning. Um, so I'm, I'm glad about that. And I have to be honest, my husband doesn't even have a cell phone. You know, that, that, that does is not own it. Feather number two in your husband's cap for me. I, this guy's, I, I wish I could say that. And you know, it's, it's funny, these, these cell phones, and this, you know, we can not, you can go, not go down this road or not. It, it's really, they're now doing studies that the, the kids who are growing up, that they aren't getting the necessary brain development, as you know, in socialization, precisely because they're continually glued to their phones. Yeah. And so they're mm -hmm. they're not getting complex solving skills because nobody's reading books anymore. Everybody's effing around on you know Snapchat and, and Instagram. And so uh, there's a wonderful gentleman, I'm sure you've probably heard of uh, Simon, was Sinek is how you pronounce his last Sinek. name? Sinek. Yes. He's a, yeah, he's a, right. he did a talk recently where, it's, where essentially he made the case for the big, that from a socialization perspective, the withdrawal into these devices is now drastically prohibiting our children to even relate to one another. And so I, I probably twice a day, at least I look at Danielle and say, you know what? I am so glad that I had a childhood before social media. Right. Because I mean, I'm a, I'm a secure 47 year old man and, and, and Instagram still makes me feel bad. You know? I, mean, I can't right. imagine, I can't imagine being the 13 year old girl right. today. Right. Oh, so anyway, it's hard. so anyway. sad. It is truly sad. And I'm, um, the number one thing, so I really want to get into what you talk about because I have a feeling we're definitely on the same wavelength with a lot of, of this and um, that uh, many of the things that you talk about are applicable not just to women, but uh, they speak more to women, but they're really applicable to every human being. So I'm, I'm lucky, the, one, the number one thing that I wanted to do raising my boys is to, to, to instill in them that they have reasoning ability they have the ability to take something someone says or something they read and determine what it means if they feel that it is true for them or not and break it down and not just take it as fact. So they have the ability to reason and to analyze and to question. Um, that skill alone would be able to handle half of social media's issues. Uh, right. because so many people just take it as fact. Right. And why did we have this whole fake news stuff, right? It, it, they just, people just take it as fact. If it sounds really not, not good or it sounds weird or something's wrong with that, it probably is, right? <laughs> right? I, te I tease her because, you know, for a while there, she, was, she came to me and she said, oh my gosh, look what I just saw on Facebook. And my first inclination is I said, Facebook, <laughs> right? You, you, yeah. got, you, you got you got to always question the, the news true. source. Now that's that's that's, a, true. that's I... a good and a bad thing because, for example, fifty years ago, all you had were the newspapers and CBS, yes. ABC, yes. and NBC. Now yes. we have all these alternative methods of communicating. Media. Yeah, but that also makes it more confusing, right? right? But right. it's easier it's easier to quantify or or clarify the validity of something, but it also gives you that many more shades of gray and trying to determine the truth. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. And I've got my son comes to me every time when I talk to him about something and he says, so where did you read that? Was it on the internet, mom? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, okay, the, the, dude, not everything on the internet is bad. Okay. Right. I read it in a scientific journal and yes, it was on the internet. Is that okay? <laughs> you yeah. know, so it well, kind of backfires on me sometimes. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because that that's very much a, that's not really a, attitude that a young person these days would have. It would more be like a, the internet. Like I remember what life was like before the internet when we had real news reportings, right? right. But yeah. these young kids like your son and our kids who grew up with the internet, that's all they've ever known. Yeah. So the fact that he would even question the validity of it from his, what his, his generation's primary news source, yeah. I think that says a lot about yeah, you. Yeah, and well, him, and thank you for that, but and him, because he does not have any social media accounts. Well, I'm sorry, I have to say, he has Twitch. He does Twitch videos, right? So he has his own, but even that, he does very, you know, he plays his trombone, and he, you know, does different things. So, yeah, he's he's amazing. So, but, I, but. I always tell her that, that if it wasn't for this business, I wouldn't even have a Facebook account. I just, yeah, why? I just don't find it interesting. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. And even to me, she's kind of, and this is one of the, we've actually struggled a little bit this way. She goes, you gotta get out there. They care about what you have to say. And I would go, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know, What's the point? I got, I get you. I get you. 
I have to adapt that this is the world now that we live in and most people don't share my opinion. Right. So I can't, if I'm going to do this business the right way, I can't sit there and go, I don't want to say what yeah, that. nothing to say. No, I get you. I am right there. And it, it's very, very true to balance those two things. But in terms of communication, so we've talked a lot about that and, and you've given me compliments and you guys have done amazing things with your kids to, to help them be um, confident human beings first and then look at what others are saying um, from that lens, um, not looking for validity or value from what other people are saying. So I'm assuming that that kind of communication, not just self-talk, but most of it is self, um, mm -hmm. but also communication back out. Is that the number one thing that you help women with? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. I, I, and, and I've said this many, many times, everything that we struggle with in life in, in one sh shape or another comes back to our self-image. Right. If we don't fulfill our potential or we don't go for a job, it's because we might have some fear because, oh, I can't do it. Or what if they say no? Or what if I don't have the skill set? Or if we are if, if a woman, for example, is treated poorly in a relationship. Um, well, I, you know, I'll just let him do that because he's, he doesn't really mean it. Uh, whereas if I could wave a wand, I would have her say, you know what? I deserve better to hell with this. I can go create that better. Adios, dude. Um, so, yeah, the short answer is, is I, I think that whether it is a self-esteem issue, whether it is fear, whether it is doubt, uh, something usually in some way always ties back, how do you feel about you? And obviously that, that, that image is created between the ages of primarily between four and eight, right? When we're younger, and we, we talked about this on the web class, but uh, that was a long-winded way of saying yes. <laughs> I no, do. it's true yeah. for all of us. And then, so these are, these are basically mindset issues. These are, right. these are self, uh, communication issues. That's what mindset is really. What, what do we play in our heads and they relate to everything, right? You're yeah. talking about he, women and how they want relationships. And that's awesome. You've taken that ability to communicate and segmented a specific market that relates to you that you can help. You can do this with your kids. It's no different than the communication with your kids and to help your kids, um, like mine, when I say something, he questions me. And although that's irritating many times because of you, you course what, I'm mom and that, I know everything. You know, that, you know what that's called, right? Uh -oh. There's actually a term, my, my friend, uh, John Berardi, I don't know if he coined the term, but, but he, he uses a wonderful term that I like called the proximity effect. And basically what the proximity effect states is that people will always discount your expertise, people closest to you will always discount your knowledge and expertise because they're your mom or right. you know your dad. It's like, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could be, for example, John is, is one of the premier nutrition and health coaches in the world. I mean, he trains, and I mean, he's a multi-million dollar company, but when he gives his dad nutritional advice, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I already know all that, you know? That's just, that, so anyway, proximity effect, you know, it's just, just the way it goes, especially when you have kids. That's the way it is. It's irritating sometimes, let me tell you. But with that, you can do the same thing, though. We try and give our kids that same confidence and have them talk to themselves that way. But like you say, between four and eight, especially, is when that's built. But middle school was the worst. Yes. It yes. is the worst place in the world yes. um, yeah. to... to try and figure out who you are. It's yeah. just awful. So getting past that and not having too many scars that you carry with you forever <laughs> from that is, is a feat in itself. And then we can look at business and think about that. So are there any specific mindset issues that you've had to overcome in business to be able to move forward? I mean, I can imagine going from writing a blog to actually making money and, and having that notoriety and being able to turn it into a product that people actually needed that solved a problem for them. I'm sure there were some mindset issues between those two things. Actually not surprisingly not. Um, and this is funny. I, I probably should. I, sometimes I feel like, like Sybil in the sense that there are days that I feel like I could change the world like Tony Robbins and then there are days where I sit and I go, why the hell would anybody care Listen about to me? Yeah. And so if I had to say that the, the biggest, my personal biggest struggle, and I, I don't have any problem in this, is my own self-doubt. Yes. Or, or my own self-worth. That stems things, from your childhood. Which, uh, you know, I have an interesting <laughs> quote, <laughs> to say the least. But I still, despite all the success that I've had or the 
even the outside affirmation, I still, in a lot of ways, have a difficult time. And we talked about earlier, you know, once I make that shift, but it, but again, a lot of that also as well as a man is tied directly to my ability to generate income. Yeah. Yeah. And as men, we are our, our primary evolutionary role, meaning our charge is to provide and protect. And if we can't do either or really both of those roles sufficiently, we will always struggle. And for us, as is the case with any entrepreneur, when you are growing a business, there are mm -hmm. lean times. Yes, and lean. And it's hard to, if thankfully we're, we're, <laughs> we're past that, but during those times, it's, it's hard to create in that mindset when you are also trying to grow the business, manage the money, Oh shit! The account's overdrawn. We didn't make what we were going to do yet. Yet you got to go out and record that podcast that, that changes somebody's life. That maybe only twelve people yeah. listen to, right? Yeah. That right. day, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. Go so ahead. anyway, so for me, um, yeah, it's just, but it, but it, it's it's funny though because as I start to make more money, I feel all of those insecurities evaporate. So at least for me personally, I think I'm like the typical man. Most of most of my personal, I think, shortcomings tend to are, are situational. So I guess I'm fortunate in that respect. I mean, some people, for example, God forbid, like you got guys like you know Chris Cornell and you know Chester Bennington, who are some of those uh, two of those really well-known rock singers who recently committed suicide. All the money, all the success, and all the fame and all the adulation did nothing to stop their self-loathing. Right. For me, all you got to do is put some money in bank in my bank account, and I'll and I'll stop self loathing. So I guess, I guess that's a I guess it's a good thing, right? <laughs> I much much uh, it's it's much better so. that you're a quote typical male. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, but it's true. Those things are, and I think that's a human condition, right? I mean, maybe situational is is a little more male than female, but um, I I don't think so because I do the same thing. I, I used to do the same thing again when when those times were very flu high fluctuations, going from a very little in the bank account to a huge number and then back down to a little bit instead of stabilizing that a little bit. Um, right. Yeah, I felt the same thing. But those those mindsets, no matter what, same thing with um, women in a relationship. They'll have a great conversation with a guy and everything's great. And then all of a sudden the guy doesn't text and she's like, oh, my God, he hates me. Right. 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 I mean, it, we um, put all that on ourselves. Well, you, well, you bring up an interesting point because by and large, I, I would and I don't know if you agree with me on this. We've never really talked about it specifically, but I, I think without a doubt, as a general rule, women struggle far more with self-worth and self-esteem issues than men do, sure we do on the whole. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and that is because we and, and I write and talk about a lot of this. We we still live in this masculine dominated world where the ideals and the, and the, and the ways about how you should be are still largely driven by men and, and old old school ways of thinking. And as women have essentially begun to level the playing field in the past 50 years or so, and, and women make their way in a man's world, they're essentially told that they need to conduct themselves kind of like men, right? But then, but then but we, we have... don't celebrate the things that women do awesome just because they're, they're women. You know I mean, for example, you know, things like nurturing and, and compassion and kindness and caring and, and patience, these are all more things that are more so than men typically associated with, with women. But you don't ever see those getting talked about. If you do, you're a pussy or you're a wimp yes. or you're soft. Mm -hmm. um, and But it's these things that, that really make the difference that are lasting in the world in terms of the, our ability to form relationships. And so, you know, one of the things that, that I talk about a lot in what I write is, let's focus on that a little bit more. Not, not in a kind of a sissy kind of way, but you know what, it's important to allow women to play on the things that they do well. And then we men, we come in and do it. And so rather than tearing each other down or dividing each other because of those weaknesses, you know, if we can each learn to play off of the things that we're really good at, and then we can still come together without beating each other up for it, well, then the whole human condition elevates, right? And I think that's kind of what you guys have done. Right. Truly. That's it. You Just bring it start you bring it full circle, sir, <laughs> sir, you bring it full circle. It's really why you guys are such a great uh, team is because you've, you've allowed yourselves to adapt and morph and play off of each other's strengths and minimize weaknesses. We all have them. They're not necessarily um, gender based. They are human conditions. And, uh, and you guys have done that. You guys have done an amazing job of that. Um, and you're carrying that not just into relationship, but also into business and allowing each of you because with my husband and myself, he is much more like Danielle in the sense of organized, focused, um, methodical, getting thinking about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And I, 
I am all over the place. I am in the sky and I am the balloon and he's hanging on to the string trying yeah. to keep me a little more to earth. <laughs> what, what's kind of funny is ironically, despite the fact that I'm you know a strong alpha male, in a lot of ways, she's kind of like the dude in our relationship because she's much more grounded. She's far less prone to emotional spikes. I'm the one that's kind of runs around and rants and 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 as yeah. I always like to say that the only reason we've made it this far is because she is just, well, I can't really say it on this podcast. <laughs> really good at putting up with my crap and my flights, and my my yeah. uh, deviations of personality. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's this- like he's like a wild horse. I just have to kind of bring him in and tame him and keep him focused. Um, that's he's just all over the place. Yes. Being a mom, I have the ability to multitask yeah, and the yeah. ability to take care of the kids and take care of the home and take care of him and take care of the business. And I can do it in my sleep, whereas he can't. He's he's pretty much like business minded. And this is what I need to do. And if anything gets in the way, it really kind of freaks him out a little bit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I would say, hey, look, so for, for in times of, of less sensitivity, I say, look, the kid, damn kids don't pay the bills. Right. Let's like. Right, let's get back on that project and tell him to get a ride from his friends. Right, right. right. I'm like, I know. That's exactly the same thing. My husband will give everything. And I'm like, dude, they're going to have to grow up sometime. Let them (laughs) figure it out. Just just yeah. zip, stop, yeah. let them yeah. do it, let them fall, it's okay. Right, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I I, I so value you guys. I really, it, it's been such an amazing conversation. I'm telling you, power parents, if you wanna know anything, women out there especially, if you wanna know anything about communication with yourself, with your with the people that are important in your life so that you actually feel um, confident, comfortable in your skin, able to do what you are empowered to do, uh, then you got to check this guy out. And uh, Austin Blood is his name and uh, his website is that name, correct? Yes. Austinblood.com. Yep. Yes. So you got to check him out. Any last words? Any, if somebody's sitting on the fence and they're like, oh, this woman is going, oh man, you know, that he speaks truth. They are speaking truth, but I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe I'm fine. You know, yeah, he is. He does mean well, you know, all that stuff. They're sitting on that fence and they're rocking back and forth and they, they're, they're just not quite sure if they should jump and take one of your courses or listen to one of your episodes or read one of your posts. What would you say to them? I would say just just join our closed Facebook group. The, it's called Warrior Women and it's a closed group and we run it and I, we only have about a thousand members in it. So it's very um, intimate and the women in there are 30 five of the women we call our blood sisters because they've been through our online programs and they've been with us for years since the beginning. So they are the moderators in the group. And you know what? They're amazing women. And it's because of what they learned from Austin and the programs. And it's just a wonderful little group. It's a little family, our tribe. And uh, I would say definitely you know, ask to be, what is it? Do they, what do they have to do to get in the group? Just ask to be. Yeah, just, just uh, as a close group. Yeah. Question. Just yeah. join and you can see what we're all about. Yeah. And meet the sisters. I love the name, Warrior Women. Absolutely. Awesome. She came with that one. <laughs> yep. I, I figured her. as much. Thank you, so, guys. I so enjoyed this chat. I can't wait for the next one. I know we will have another soon. Yep. Uh, but in the meantime, man, enjoy the journey. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us very much. To get powered up for your day, just go to parentepower.com and listen to the over 200 episodes we have so far with amazing entrepreneurs just like you. It might just help you feel like a grown-up again.